Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be testing out all of Makeup by Mario's bronzing category. So he has four different products he came out with recently, the two soft sculpt products. One of them is a all over warming complexion tint, which is a balm. And then he also has the radiant skin powder that allegedly goes on top of the balm. But then when I saw that these two products came out, I was like, okay, so what is the difference between his original powder bronzer and his original, let me see here, soft sculpt shaping stick. So he's got a lot going on in the whole contour bronzing world. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to get all of them <laughs> and compare all four of them and give you my thoughts on which ones I like best, how the performance is. I anticipate that all of these are going to be slightly different in the finish. I imagine that the soft sculpt contouring stick is probably going to be a little bit more cool tone just because it's a contour versus a bronzer. And so, yeah, we're going to see what's what. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I am going to start with his original products. And so I think what I'll do is I'll do the soft sculpt shaping stick and the bronzer on top of that on this side of my face. And then on the other side of my face, I'll do the two brand new products. So here are the two OG products. Here is the cream contour stick. It does come with a brush on the other end, which I never use these so but just so you know it, it, it does come with a brush on one end and then the product on the other I feel like you actually get quite a bit of product in here I believe you get 10.5 grams or 0.37 ounces which is pretty good actually for um, a cream bronzer and then we do also have the powder bronzer and this is actually really nice packaging makeup by Mario just does the traditional white plastic components but this has a nice hefty weight to it and the magnet is pretty good makes it feel pretty secure so and here is the powder bronzer so i have both of these products swatched on this hand obviously the top one is the medium cream bronzer <laughs> and then the bottom swatch is the medium powder bronzer so i'm going to start with Ooh, i'm not sure i like that i don't like that okay here's a packaging thing that i'm just going to nitpick I don't like that when you go to open this, the cap pops off on the brush side over the product side. This is a lot more difficult to, am I doing this wrong? No, well, I guess it's, I mean, I guess it is just because it's super secure, but for me, I'm like, Ugh. I don't want the brush. I want the product. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do right hand side of my face. I always have to think about it. I don't know why that's really bad. I'm going to go ahead and just place this product under my cheekbone here we have lots of doggy noises it's a good thing though my senior dog is actually asking for for food right now so that makes me really happy this is the uh zoeva let me see 110 face shape brush and we'll go ahead and zoom in on this so you can really see this is really easy to buff into the skin and i'm going to take it down just a little bit too and then just, I'm actually going to use a tapping motion to push this into the skin. And just buffing out the top part where I have some on my forehead. How's my face look? Does it look slightly more sculpted? Let me actually pull my mirror further away so I can actually see. And yeah, actually that does look, that does look pretty, pretty sculpted actually. Let's do a test to see if it's like splotchy or anything like that? No, actually, I don't see any skipping. Everything looks smooth. That's nice. So I am just going to layer down a little bit of translucent powder over that cream bronzer just because as I lay down the powder bronzer, I don't want it to grab on any certain areas. I just want it to kind of blend into this skin smoothly. Let's go ahead now and I'm actually just going to use the same brush. This is a nice powder brush from LaRousse, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that bronzer. Ooh, there's not a lot of kick up on this product, which is nice. And let's get to bronzing. I'm going to really, really build it up though. And we're not going to do any blush or highlight today. We're just going to focus solely on our bronzer, which is like weird. 
I feel like I said that and I all of a sudden have like FOMO from a highlight. <laughs> I don't know. There's something wrong with me. <laughs> this looks this looks really good. I'm gonna hold my mirror further away now so I can see my whole face. These two products together are really, really beautiful. I like the powder bronzer because I don't feel like it's not totally matte, I would say. I anticipate though that the new products that came out are going to be way more light catching than this product though. Okay, so we're gonna set the two OG products to the side now and we're gonna take care of the left side of my face. We're gonna turn this from being pumpkin-y to hopefully more sculpted. Here is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in the shade medium as well. And this one is definitely a balm. You can kind of see that. It was very, very soft to the touch, very like fluid in a way. And then we also have the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector, again in the shade medium. This one, okay, so when I swatched it, and I'll show you the swatches on my hand right after, you can see that the powders actually do mix really, really well together. I am, I don't, I don't know, I'm slightly nervous. If you can zoom in on it, you'll see that the top part of this definitely has quite a bit of shimmer in it. I am not a big shimmery bronzer person. Like I like my bronzers to be not flat, but lifelike and just add some warmth to my skin. I feel like this is going to make me look like I'm like in the Twilight movies. Like I'm a vampire with like the, you know, like the, so it, but Hey, we're here, so we're going to try it. Let me go ahead and show you the swatches here. So this is the balm, and then this is the powder um, that's supposed to go on top of the balm. I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush here straight into this, grabbing a decent amount, I guess. First off, I will say the undertone of this. I wanna say the contour has I don't know if it's showing up on camera. It is slightly darker, I would say. It almost has like a grayer cast to it compared to the balm, which makes sense because it is if it's meant to be a contour product, right? It's supposed to really add shadows versus just warming up the skin. Oh wow, that went on super fast. And I don't feel like that was difficult at all. Okay, take a little bit more. I do feel like I kind of want to blend out those edges though. I always have that though. I feel like when you apply using a brush, you're always going to want to go back in and just diffuse out all of the edges that you've kind of created by using a precise brush. I'm actually going to use a, a, a sponge to just blend out those harsh edges. That's definitely more glowy than the other side, I would definitely say, just looking back and forth. It's got quite a bit more of a sheen to it. I feel like it's given me some definition without being so heavy. Like obviously on the right side of my face, when you look when you look straight on, you're like, oh yeah, she's definitely wearing some sort of contour product or she's wearing bronzer. Whereas on this side, I would definitely say it just kind of looks like, oh, she's just lightly bronzed, you know? It's like she uh, went on a really nice vacation recently uh, and got a tan on. Here's the part where it's gonna get kinda trippy because according to his Instagram and his website, you don't have to powder your face between these two steps. So between balm and powder, you don't have to actually lay down a, a, a base of like translucent powder to get the powder to just blend nicely into the skin. We're gonna try it and see what happens. I'm taking step by step his instructions. Now he says to mix it all together, so that is also what we're gonna do, but this, uh, it's shiny. It's shiny, man. It's shiny. All right. Okay. I feel like I'm conquering my fears. <laughs> this one definitely has a little more kick up compared to the matte bronzer, so just, just FYI. Oh. Sh oh, shit. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's, it's 
like I bronzed and highlighted all at the same time. Wait, what? There's no, okay, all right, hang on. We need to, we need to do a close up on this. Okay, I do have a complaint though. I, I don't think that you'll be able to see this in the camera, but this is something that I can see and just because I am looking like, if anyone is looking this close to your face, I would advise them to like, maybe not be so close in your personal bubble, but for makeup review purposes, I'm just gonna pretend like, yeah. And this makes sense, right? Because anytime you're adding something that's a little bit more sparkly, like even with highlight, right? It just is going to emphasize your skin texture. It's gonna make your pores pop out a little bit more. So I can see on this side of my face right here, which is a trouble spot for me. Um, I just, my pores are quite a bit emphasized. They just look a little bit larger. I can definitely see that texture there. Whereas when I look on the right hand side, everything just looks quite a bit more flawless. The pores are covered. The, the powder isn't, you know, sticking to anything like that. I can just on this side, I can definitely see. And that is why I don't like shimmery bronzers. So here's my, here's my thought process when it comes to shimmery bronzers, matte bronzers and whatever. I'm going to be wearing a ton of highlight anyway. So I am going to be adding that texture back into my skin inevitably just because highlight is going to show that off. And so generally speaking, when I am doing bronzer, I don't, I don't, I don't like to have that sort of a gleam there. Now, is it super beautiful when it's zoomed out and far away? Oh, hell yes. Like my skin looks like it's just healthy, right? Like it has a nice sheen to it, but up close and personal, I'm feeling slightly like self-conscious about the fact that like probably no one else can see my pores but I know that they're there. <laughs> From an initial standpoint all of the products behave exactly how I thought that they were going to behave which is good right so there were like really no surprises here. I would definitely say if you are a full coverage kind of makeup wearer like you like the full glam um, and you, maybe you have some skin texture, maybe you have some skin issues, just like me, I have really big pores, I have skin texture, I used to have really bad acne in high school, then I would recommend going with the original products. On the right side where I use the OG products, everything just looks really, really smooth and very cohesive with the skin, so I really like that. If you are a natural makeup wearer though, I think that the skin balm, this one, the skin enhancer, sorry, the Oliver Warming Complexion Tint. Oh, this is really nice. I love how it glided onto the skin. I really, really like how easy it was to apply. It just goes on very, very smooth. And it doesn't really look like, you know, you've done like an extra layer on your skin. It just kind of looks like, oh, like, yeah, I'm naturally bronze. Like, it's perfect for summer. So on the days when I am trying to just get away with wearing like concealer, you know, not like a, like an actual layer of like foundation or anything like that. This is exactly what I would reach for. This is awesome. This is super, super nicely formulated. I like it a lot. Now the skin perfecter with the sparkles in it and the, it's not, I should stop calling it sparkles. It's not really sparkles, but just with the shimmer in it for someone who has <laughs> beautiful skin <laughs> so like someone who like gets facials all the time you're blessed like genetically um this would be a really nice product i think for you because i do think it gives you um both the highlight and the bronzer all at the same time it warms up your skin really nicely just for me on a very very personal and a very like i don't know involved with all of my like insecurities and stuff like this is not the product that i would reach for it's not my thing y'all it's not my thing but if it's yours it does work really well. I just, yeah, it's just not my thing. I want to fully test these for an entire week. I want to try them out in terms of the longevity. Do they stay on my face? I want to work out with these. And so we will be back at the end of the week with my final thoughts. I don't think that any of my comments on, on who would like this and what audience would like the different products is going to change, but at least I can give you some insight into whether or not these products will last on your skin because at the end of the day, all complexion products should go through the same longevity test and so that is what I will be doing for the rest of the week. I will see you guys in a little bit.
Hey everyone, welcome to the end of the week. Yes, all right, so now it is time for my final thoughts on the bronzer products, or bronzing products, I guess, from Makeup by Mario. So let's talk about the solid winners here. So that would definitely be the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. This is an awesome cream bronzer. Super impressed with this. It goes on very, very smooth. As you blend it out, it doesn't become patchy. It doesn't pick up your foundation. Just, it's a really, really good product. I did struggle quite a bit with the packaging because every time I tried to open it, I would get the brush end, which is not what I wanted. But that's, I mean, that's like a small deficiency, right? So I definitely understand why this product has been sold out multiple times. <laughs> Obi is drinking water, so we're going to take a quick pause. And then moving on to the next product that I thought was really good. This one is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. This is his balm, his bronzing balm. Again, also a really, really good product. Now, the difference between these two is that this is definitely quite a bit more sheer. So if you are looking for a product that isn't going to necessarily just like, boom, hit you with a bronzer in the face, uh, then this is the product I would go with. So the powder bronzer, I don't have any complaints about this but to be totally honest like it wasn't earth shatteringly good either like this isn't a bronzer that I would go and say like oh yeah this is the best bronzer in the whole world like I've used other bronzers that I like more to be totally honest like the Physicians Formula Butter bronzers are still in my opinion better performing than this bronzer I just thought it was like it was it was fine there's nothing really special about it. It lasts fine on the skin. There's no patching, anything like that, but it just wasn't really like, I don't know, like, I honestly just feel like because the makeup industry is kind of saturated right now, there's so many products out there to try that like, if you're not like wowing me and drawing me in, I'm kind of like, ah, oh, it's chill. It's chill. It's pretty good. It's all right. It's like, yeah. So that's how I feel about the powder bronzer. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector. This is a very interesting formula. I, I didn't like it in my first impressions and I continued to not like it as I used it throughout the week. But the formula of this powder though is not like any other powder bronzer I have really tried before. It feels more like a finishing powder, which I think is kind of what he intended to do with this product. So for example, you don't actually need to layer down translucent powder on your cream products before applying this powder. That I think is super cool. Very, very original with the formula. Now, here's what I want Makeup by Mario to do, or I guess what I want Mario to do. I would really like for him to come out with this powder formula in this shade and this shade only. I don't want the glitteriness because I just, I don't know, I get, who, I don't know. It just, it doesn't, it didn't work for my skin type. What I did wanna say is that this reminds me a lot of, so IT Cosmetics came out with a giant, I don't have it anymore because I, I actually panned the product. It was like a giant bronzer that was like this size and it was pretty much the same gradient, right? Where it went from like highlight to bronzer. Now that worked because it was such a huge pan that you could easily section out like, okay, the top part is for highlight, the bottom part is for bronzer and you could use it as such, right? So this kind of, Reminds me of that except that the intent of this is supposed to be that you use all three of these gradients together And that's the part where I'm like Ugh. So I found myself utilizing this by just pulling product from this bottom half of the pan which to me Is kind of a waste now also if you are a huge fan though of like very subtle highlights and just highlights that kind of give you like a nice you know, gleam or anything like that, then you could potentially pick up something like this and then just use, you know, the bottom part as a bronzer and the top part as a highlight. Now for me, y'all know that I like highlights that, you know, blind you as I walk by you. So uh, am I going to use this product for that? <laughs> no, it's too subtle. So um, that is just kind of how I felt about this one. My recommendations would be the contour stick and then also the bronzing balm. I think they are absolute winners. So I had a really fun time though, trying all of these different bronzing products because honestly, you know, not every bronzer on the market is the same. And so it was really fun understanding just within his makeup line, what the difference is between all four of these. So yeah, hope you guys found this helpful. And if you like this video, please feel free to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Clyde right on. <laughs> I mean, hopefully not.